let's talk to our special guest today, Brett. I want to find out about you, bro. I've heard so much great stuff from Matt. Uh, obviously, you are just a specimen to look at. I mean, I've seen that picture of you at the table, and your hand, your arms are just insane. I mean, you look like a, a pro bodybuilder more than even an arm wrestler. But uh, I hear that you're the, the number two seed in Australia right now, right behind Rickard Borman, and you might be his biggest uh, threat. So uh, how did it all begin, and when did you start arm wrestling, brother? Geesh. I was probably, it's only one or two other people in Australia that started before me. That would be Sam Safiri had been around and Big Murray McKay had done a few things, but I've been doing it for probably 17 years. Um, so I was at the first nationals. I, I think I won, won the first nationals left and right in two weight classes. Um, but yeah, I'm getting old too, so I'm starting to get a few more injuries. But yeah, I've been competing for like 17 years. Last few years, I've fallen off a little bit with work and other stuff, but um, I'm having a good crack at it again now. Wow, that's impressive. 17 years. That's a true OG right there. And uh, yeah. RHCP, he says, congrats, Brett, on your last showing at AWE. Impressive. Ask Brett if Bam Bam Borman is ready for the international elite. Yeah, Rickard is a freak. Um <laughs> I, I thought I would be able to sit in his power zone, which most people I can fight power to power. Rickard, you just certain places you can't go. Um, I think I've still got options. I've definitely got a way through, but he's got a lot of ways through me too. So you can't sit under that press and such a big dude. It's just not possible. What's your height compared to Rickard? Are you guys close in height or is he a lot taller? Nah, he's, um, I'm just under six foot and he's what, probably six, three, six, four, six, he's three, got, six, three. And he's got 25 kilos on me. Okay. And, uh, Drew 24 has just shared the Propanja leagues, YouTube, uh, guys go get over there and check it out. It's got 300 K subs already. So let's, uh, let's help them grow over there in North America and, you know, let's get them really out here. And, uh, they just said, thanks for your continued support to Drew. So, uh, Tell me about how you're getting prepared for this big eight-man event that you got coming up October 27th. I've been smashing it. I've actually been off work for a couple of weeks. I've been training twice a day, every day. Probably kind of just overdid it a little bit recently where I have may have hurt myself a touch, but I should be right. Um, my left hand's... I'm pretty confident with my left. I think Rick Gard's in trouble. Um, but I've just been stacking on the way, training twice a day, arm wrestling twice a week, um, arm wrestling training every day, um, doing everything I can. Who's some of your training partners that are helping you get ready for this? Um, I've got Andy Bosney Shoes. He won the 100 kilo class at Nationals last year. Um, other than that, most of my training partners are smaller, but they're all at the top of their weight class. Um, but we use bands. I do a lot of, I've got an arm wrestling table in front of a cable cage. So I do a lot of weight and cable training to improve strength. Um, the actual table time, I get technique out of it, but I don't find I get that much extra strength out of it, which is what I need. We got a, we got a question from Murphy. He wants to know, um, huge arm wrestling fan is Auden more advanced than you guys thought for his weight. Uh, let me ask uh, Matt, what, what do you think with that? Uh, well, I think that he's looked incredibly good, but the opponents that he's gone against haven't been the highest quality of arm wrestler. So it's a little bit hard to tell, uh, you know, the people that he's gone against, like James English and the Korean Hulk, um, you know, they're, they're not established elite arm wrestlers. So, you know, Auden's going to look very, very comfortable technique-wise against people like that who are still learning the game and, and trying to be up-and-comers. But it'll be interesting if he if he does go against somebody who is at that top level that does have a technique that could potentially match him. Um, I'm not sure if that's the path that they are really pushing towards. I think they're looking more at um, what's the biggest possible name recognition match that gets the most attention as opposed to the technical aspect to please the arm wrestling fans. Brett, I'm going to ask you, brother, what do you think of a possible match between Ryan Bowen and Auden Lorette? How do you think that goes? Um, I think Auden's got too much. Um, 
neither of them are big horsepower pullers. They have technical, and I think Orton's just, he's too big. His arm's too long. He's too much hand control. What's your record against Ryan Bowen? I heard that you got a 10 on the last <laughs> event and all. Nah, he's never pinned me and he hates it. Oh, <laughs> he, got, he got a, he flash pinned me in the last AWE, but elbow fouled. Um, and so I beat him first round. He elbow fouled, so we started again. He got a flash pin on me, but he elbow fouled. And the next one, once it stops, yeah, I've, I've got it. But he really wants to pin on me back. What kind of style puller are you? Are you an inside puller? Yeah, I'm a hooker. Yeah, I could see that way. I could yeah. tell by the power and your physique and all that. You could definitely tell that. So uh, what's the plans for Rickard? Um, you, do you have like a strategy to try being him? Or do you want to go inside with him? 100% have a strategy. I don't want to share too much of that. Um, <laughs> I think there's only one or two lanes. I can't go high. I have to stay out from underneath the press. Um, and I've been training a particular move very, very hard, uh, which I think is his only weakness. So we'll find out shortly. Now, who else is part of this eight man that you are a little worried about? Is there anybody else that gets you a little worried? Um, Charles Pury is a great arm wrestler. He's a um, New Zealand. I think he's number two in New Zealand. Um, good top roller. Always dangerous. Um, who else would there be, Matt? Like, Matt, who, uh, who is that? Is that one of those giants you were telling us about? The guy from New yeah. Zealand? Everyone in this field is a giant, uh, <laughs> Brett included. Yeah, Charles Puri um, is has been pushing against Matawarangi Hedda Morris uh, for years, and uh, you know it's, it's, he's sort of been sitting in that number two spot. And you know Matawarangi's always had sort of the big opportunities in the spotlight, and Charles is right there. He's right underneath Matawarangi, and he's really pushing for it. So we really wanted to give him the opportunity to showcase his skill set. Um, and yeah, he's uh, everyone in this field has the opportunity and the ability to win it. Um, so he, he's a monster coming over from New Zealand. We've got Marcus Atirai, who's another giant who's over 300 pounds and six foot, I don't know, six foot five, six foot six or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's, he's enormous as well. Uh, trains with Ryan Bowen and Lachlan Adair up in uh, Brisbane. Uh, there, is, there is some absolute killers in this field. Ryan Bowen, of course, will be in the field. Uh, Rick Bournemouth is looking to defend his title. Uh, Charles Puri. It's it's a it's a lineup of, of of absolute warriors in this. It's a little the biggest the biggest possible guys we could get. We're throwing them we're throwing them all into the mix and seeing who's going to come out. Yeah, big Marcus um, could ruin someone's day because if you get in a battle, he's so hard to finish. So I'm hoping to stay away from Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you have experience pulling everybody in there, or is there somebody that you haven't actually faced and you know have no idea? No, I'm, if I haven't pulled them, I'm, I've watched. I've been studying. Okay. But I, I said it, it should come down to Ryan Bowen, Rickard, myself, and Charles or Marcus. I think Charles. I think it'll be those four. Very nice. I'd agree. I'd agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. But the, the fun thing is that uh, we get to, to showcase and spotlight some of the best pullers that have been in Australia and in New Zealand and in this region of the world um, that maybe the US and European audiences haven't seen before. And it's like, these guys are, are top level elite guys that have been around, as Brett said, like 17 years. Um and to sort of be able to get them on the international stage and say, well, have a look at these guys because they're absolutely incredible uh, and hopefully get some international opportunities uh, coming out of this as well. Now, how do you train for, you know, an eight man event like this? Like, is it different than, you know, your normal just getting ready for a super match? Is there something that you got to do? Do you have to work on the conditioning? And I mean, I, I know you got 17 years of experience. How many of these like round robin or eight man events have you been a part of? Uh, I would say this is my third round robin, I think, but I'm known for endurance. So if a match stops, I'm happy. If it, I'm 10 deep, I tend to get better and better unless my hand really gets fatigued. Um, I'm an endurance puller, so I'm happy 
with more and more pulls. <laughs> yeah, this the power when uh, Brett is on the table is is something to behold. Uh, I was refereeing a, a tournament that we had that Brett was competing in, and it was him and, a, and another very very strong puller, a Lachlan Carpenter, uh, and they were both Lachlan. against each other. Oh, you know Lachlan Carpenter, yeah, awesome. He, yeah, he's he at the Washington State. I got to meet him over there. He did very well over there. He came there with Mario Tambakis a couple years ago. Yeah, yeah, he's a fantastic guy and, and a super strong puller. And uh, so he was lined up against Brett, and I was refereeing. And then I was like, I had my hand on both of their forearms while I'm trying to get them lined up. And I just the the force that was coming in on that setup was like, oh my god! I hope this table doesn't like just rip it off. When I said go, I had to like step back because I thought, you know, if they slip, I'm going to get punched in the face. <laughs> Now, Brett, are you what? What's your weight at? Are you uh, an actual super heavyweight, or are you a heavyweight? No, I'm a. I'm pushing my weight up as high as I can now. I'm about 108, but I'm an actual 100 to 105. And what what is that in pounds, Matt? Do you have any? Uh, ideas? Uh, 220, 220, 230. 230. Uh, okay. So who is um, the king of the super heavyweights in Australia? I, I know Rickard is probably, you know, the top. Who, who would be right behind him as uh, the next super heavyweight? Uh, it's lock on, lock on it there. Yeah, definitely. Is he an actual, he's an actual super heavyweight these days, or is he more of like a 242 kind of guy? Yeah, he's the he same. Did drop oh, down. Me. He's the same as me. Okay. So you guys don't really have too many super heavyweights because I know I was in um, the Reddit group and, uh, you know, I posted a video up and I was like saying about Brian Shaw versus Rickard and how to, how would that go? And, you know, Derek Smith commented on there and he goes, yeah, that makes no sense. Um, you know, Rickard is number one in Australia. You know, why would you put uh, Brian Shaw up against him? I'm, well, I'm like, you are aware Rickard's only in one year. And, you know, what other super heavyweights are in Australia to, to judge off of that? And I'm like, you don't think Brian Shaw would come in there and be at the top of the level as well? So am I am I wrong with that? Do you think Brian Shaw would be a problem for, for you guys over there? You have supers uh, that could go up against a guy like that? Right, you can also do that if you want. It's Brian Shaw. I, I've met the man. I think I'd shit my pants getting on the table with him. Um, <laughs> but and he, his training looks legitimate. Like, if you watch Eddie Hall, it looks awkward and uncomfortable. If you watch Brian Shaw, it looks fluid. It looks like he's getting somewhere. I think in six months, I don't know about now, in six months he could be a big problem for everyone. How do you think if it, it was today, if he went up against Rickard, how do you think that match would go? Uh, I think he put himself in the wrong spot and Rickard would smash him. Like you can't, you have to hide from some of Rickard's power. If you, you can't outmuscle some of his moves. You just can't do it. So unless he got out of it, nah, he'd lose. So I got to ask um, you this, bro, before, you know, Don Hollywood joins us and everything. Um, how do you think that match is going to go January 25th? You know, we have a, a legend you know, of our sport, Don Underwood, you know, he's 30 years experience and all. And now we got this young phenom, Rickert, that's coming in one year in. How does this match turn out? Um, I have my opinion. I, I, I haven't seen Don Arnold in a long time. I don't think he can out-top roll Rickard. Rickard's a freak up top. I think he, if he does his homework, there is a way through. But if he goes in too confident, I think he'll lose. Wow. Well, this is going to be I, good. I can't wait to see this, man. This is, you know, definitely this this kid, Rickard, I'm just hearing some amazing things about him. And, uh, you know, just to really take it in and just one year in the sport and he's already doing this much and making so much of a stir is just wild. And, uh, Brett, yeah, I, I'm really, really want to see you and him going at it. And then to get a double whammy, you know, right after the eight-man event, we get to see you guys square up left hand. And I hear that's your dominant hand. So um, no. what's your probability? Give us, like, a percentage of you taking home the win with that left hand in your head. I'm pretty confident. I'll, Give like me a percentage. Like, if you had to put it on, what, what, what do you think you are to win? Left, I reckon I'm about 90%. Oh. Whoa. 90. 
right and right. I'm saying I'm still, even with a small injury, I'm still 50-50 because I've done my homework. I know what I have to do. There is an option. There is a way through. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm loving the confidence with the left, man, and, uh, you know, it's going to be a good one. Ah. Uh, I want to say a few shout outs to a couple of guys that just joined in the chat. We got tall Paul. He says, howdy y'all, Mr. Paul in the Hollywood. We got Luca in the house. We got our man, Ryan Grandin over here from the 98. We got throttle villain. What's up fellas. Mystery man in the house. He says, Rickard is going to three Oh Don mismatch. Wow. Okay. There we go. Wow. That's a yeah. yeah, a lot of confidence with Ricker coming in and everything. Can't wait till Don joins us and uh, hear what Don's got to say about all this. He's probably listening <laughs> right now, and he probably wants to get on here right now. We also <laughs> got uh, Rio Salvatore from Louisiana in the house. What's going on? How is he getting out there so fast in one year? Uh, can you answer that, Matt? Yeah, it was insane. I mean, he's he's just one of those genetic freaks that, that just happens to come out. And this is what's fun about finding people that, that find arm wrestling. Um, the very first pull that we, we noticed him was um, him versus Terence Offerman, who is a South African legend. And he was pushing Terence Offerman. And I think it was his very first go at, at arm wrestling. <laughs> it's like, how does that even happen? Uh, and then he came along to the one of the training sessions uh, at Ryan Bowen's club, the Kingpins in Brisbane, uh, for his very first night. And he was pushing the absolute top guys. And it was his first goer. Like, he didn't know what he's doing technique-wise or anything. He's just so powerful. He's obviously a, a natural athlete. I mean, he's a, he's a rugby player, a professional rugby player, and that's what he's in Australia to do. Unfortunately, he has an injury, I think it was his hamstring or his calf or something like that, which has sort of held him back a little bit. But uh, he, in the meantime, has found arm wrestling and, you know, he's he's been able to apply all of his athletic training and, and skill and strength into that sport uh, as opposed to rugby. But, yeah, he's, uh, he's blown past... Um, uh, the people that we have uh, at, in that level. And uh, he was training with Ryan, I think, two weeks ago. And Ryan said, uh, how much How much do you actually have to use, like percentage-wise, to, to pin me? Uh, when I'm going 100%, he's like, how much do you have to use, Rickard, to beat me? And Rickard said, to be honest, Ryan, it's probably 60%. <laughs> so I was like, you know, that's just a freak of nature right there. Brett, can you explain, like, when you first, the first time you gripped up with him, like, what what did you feel? Yeah. What did you notice about him? Does he have a big hand? Like, is the hand insane powerful? Like, what was your reaction of everything with Rickard? I've got to admit, I haven't had the chance to, to train with regard. It was just the comp. And I was at a certain, um, certain theory of the whole comp that I was relying on for my style. And I did the same thing with Rickard and just sat under his press and it didn't work. So I haven't had the chance to train with him and try and find holes and see where he's strong. But his hand doesn't feel, you know, like I've felt way worse hands in the setup. Um, but I've never seen anyone like Lachlan Adira and myself, we were both pretty lucky. We started and we had armor and talent. Like we could just do it, but not like this. But this kid's elbow is steel. He can just go sideways from anywhere. But my elbow would tear itself in half if I did what he tried, what he does. He's Where like, do we yeah. think he's gained that side pressure from? You know, because I was expecting you to say, like, his hand is, like, enormous or something, you know, nah. and he had, like, a genetic gift or something. No. Nah. Wow. So, like, what, what do we think that, you know, he's developed this side pressure? Is it something with rugby? Because, I mean, I don't think even rugby is going to really – translate over is there maybe like something else that he does or it's a gift that that he could press from anywhere on the table where most people's elbow would just explode he could just apply this a stupid amount of pressure through his elbow joint and he's fine well, i don't get it <laughs> um rio salvatore he's asking uh super match or tournaments i guess he's uh that was it to his other question about how did uh ricker get out there so fast in one year was it that he took on a bunch of super matches or was it his tournament um you know awards like what, what was that really stood out 
I think it was the um, his first night with with uh, Ryan Bowen really stood out. I mean, Ryan made a video on that, and uh, it was him and Lock on a Dare just sort of shaking their heads at how this guy was so strong, and you know his first go at it really. Um, and from that, I think Ryan really sort of pushed pushed um, him into the uh, stratosphere of, of social media. Um, we had AWE2, which was an event we held here in Adelaide. Well, not here in Adelaide. I'm in Mumbai at the moment. <laughs> but in Adelaide, we had AWE2, where he took on Mario Tembarkas. And so we used that opportunity to uh, try to promote Rickard as much as we possibly could. And although Mario was able to get the win there, uh, Rickard was still... Uh, looking very dominant in certain positions and certain moments throughout the match. Um, you know, he's such a humble young man and, and so personable that it's very easy to like him. Uh, so I think that he will be able to build a, a fan base very easily. And from there, he went on to win the national title. He's had matches uh, against Mario Tabaka since then and beaten him uh, in tournament formats. Um, so he's he's just risen... Um, I'd say naturally through his performances, uh, not only through the ta training table, but through through super matches and through national tournaments as well. Yeah, so he's an all round kind of guy. And uh, Captain Marge says, after Khalid, we all a bit reluctant to get excited about a new talent from afar. What do you guys <laughs> think? Uh, com you know, compared to Khalid and all. But the only thing is with Khalid, he really wasn't all in. He kind of was like just putting one foot in, and and then he started going off and and going with the MMA, and you know. So I don't know if he's as dedicated as Rickard is right now. It seems like uh, you know Rickard's going all in. He's taking this for real. I know he also is a rugby player, but because of that injury, you know, it's kind of got him a hundred percent in into the arm wrestling world. So you know, I think that might be a little different there and uh what do you, was your guys thoughts on that yeah i think uh with with khalid um that he probably didn't have as much sort of that that humble side that personality that rickard has you know he you, know, you talk to rickard he'll he'll thank you a hundred times uh, and you know and and be just so grateful to have the opportunity to for any anything to do with with sport anything to do with arm wrestling um i i think that we, you know it was, it was a little bit of the opposite with with Khalid I think there was maybe a language barrier there but um I, I felt that there was some some slight arrogance from Khalid which may have hampered him a little bit from people being able to get behind him support him but uh, obviously he's a very strong strong man but uh, what do you think Brett? Uh, I think Khalid was his hand is off the charts but he didn't have all the other things where Rickard can top roll with the best of him he can his hook is right up there, and his press is so he can do everything. Where Khalid had the hand, but not really the horsepower or the technique to back the rest of it. So he was still elite, but not even in the same park. Brett, would you say that um, Rickard's table IQ is pretty high for a beginner, or does he still have a lot to learn? I think he can just naturally do everything. Like I would, I really want. <laughs> I really want to dislike him, but he's such a <laughs> kid. Uh, it, it makes me sick that he can just do everything, and he's strong everywhere. Well, I'm I really want to see him get out on the international stage and all, and just see like how he does with some of the other big super heavyweights in the sport. You know, a lot of people are saying like uh, James Lee saying he wants to see Rickard versus Khalid. Um, Toll Paul is saying he wants to see Rickard versus Brzezinski. Got to happen soon too. So I mean, you know, they're they're throwing him right into the the deep waters right away. They wanna they wanna see more of this guy yeah. for sure. I'd love to see what happens when someone does find a way through whether he's table IQ, then, then that's when I think you'll see his table IQ. He can do everything when he's winning, but when someone finds a hole, probably in a couple of weeks' time, um, <laughs> hopefully in a couple of weeks' time, uh, then I want to see what he does. Like, I think he's got all the tools to still come back and win, but I think that'll make it interesting. Do you think uh, possibly what could be happening right now is that he's just so much stronger than everybody, like just he's got this natural strength. So, you know, when he gets into like a, you know, a harder match, he kind of just powers through them. And then, you know, maybe if he finds somebody that's equal as powerful, you know, then we're going to get to really see where he's at with the, you know, technique and all. Yeah, of course. It's, I mean, that's how we all get tested, I suppose. When, when someone can beat you at what you're good at, 
and you have to find another way. Paul Paul says, hopefully we see Rickard in more interviews leading up to the match. He might have some on-point trash talk and skills, too, laughing out loud. Mm -hmm. Well, Paul Paul, we were going to actually have him on tonight, but, uh, you know, he's working today. Um, but we're in talks, and uh, we'll definitely, uh, Matt, if we can, you know, if he can't make one of the Buzz Show hours, maybe me and you will just do, like, a special time, and we'll get him on the channel. And, uh, you know, I think people want to, you know, maybe you could poke him a little and get him to talk some trash and all that. Mm -hmm. But he's such a nice guy, man. Anytime I've had a conversation, I, I just find it hard to believe he's going to be trash talking, but maybe we could uh, bring <laughs> something out in him, you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, it, I, I can't even imagine him saying anything uh, detrimental to another person. <laughs> um, I, I did see him get in um, Bowen Contado's face in a match. Oh, uh, yeah, he, in a match, he, yeah. Yeah, in a match. He can still get excited on the table. And, and who's this other guy that we just mentioned? What's his name? Um, he's an elite left-hand puller in Australia. Okay. Yeah, and, uh, they had a match. Big dude. He, he's another monster. Uh, he's probably 100 kilos, just under 100 kilos. Um, he, he he had a match um, which was on the AWE Underground channel with uh, with Rickard. And Bowen, Bowen does like to talk trash, and especially during the match. And, uh, yeah, he was he was saying some stuff, like, in the middle of a pool, uh, which Rickard responded to a little bit. Um, and had a good laugh uh, at, at certain moments. Uh, there's a particular moment which I can't say the words that came out of Bowen's <laughs> mouth, but uh, it's it's very funny. Well, I found it funny, and even in the edit, I couldn't stop laughing every time I watched it. Uh, so <laughs> that's on the AWE Underground channel. If you have a look at Rickard Borman versus Bowen Contado, um, that's that's a classic moment. I think yeah. uh, Bo Bowen regretted those words, though, didn't he? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Rickard, Rickard flogged him. <laughs> well, Brett, I want to hear more about you, brother. I want to hear like who is somebody in the arm wrestling world that has inspired you and kind of influenced your journey as a competitor. I oh, definitely John Pazink back in the day. Like, I've I've been watching arm wrestling for 15, 16, 17 years now. So, but it's always been John. I remember I pulled John here one year at Arnold's and he made me feel that week that I nearly pulled out of the tournament. I was, I was, I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to enter. I don't know what's wrong with me. Then I won, I won the under 100, both hands, and the open, both hands. And John just crushed me like I wasn't there. Wow. Who, who else? Like, is, is, is it John's style that, you know, is it, like, similar to your style, like, when he goes inside or? Yeah, yeah, he hooks, he hooks very similar to me. I can't do the top roll as well as he can, but we do pull, well, I think we pull similar in the hook. Um, but I've been one of those pullers that have just specialised, you know, I'm good at one thing and I just try and do that as well as I possibly can. So I'd love to be able to top roll. I just can't make it work. What's some of the exercises you do to develop that, that strong hook that you got? Um, like I said, I've got a cable cage at home at the table. So I've got a wrist wrench. I'm just working all different angles from those cables all the time. And like, um, is there anything like, are you into like wrist curls or the like, what, what's real key for the hook? You know why I'm asking is I, I'm trying to really, you know, become a hooker with my statue and everything. You know, I, I've been top rolling and all that, but I just really want to get that inside game, you know, and I got this like huge forum and I just want to put it to use and also that's why I'm trying to pick your brain is, you know, how can I come a great hooker? I think once you set the hook, I pronate really heavily at the bottom. I've actually posted some videos on my Facebook page. So I do a lot of um, a belt through a um, pulley with a lot of pronation, kind of the hooking movement with a lot of pronation at the bottom. So I find if you don't pronate hard at the bottom, it's very difficult to finish your hook. Um, if we got Drew24 in here still, can you please share um, his Facebook page so we could check out these videos that he talks about? And, you know, as soon as I get off here, I'm definitely going to go and uh, take a look at them and, you know, definitely save those. And next time I'm in the gym, start working that for sure. Okay. So I, do most of it, I do most of it wow. at, home, at home on a table with a cable cage. If I at the gym, I do a lot of wrist work, a lot of that kind of stuff, but it just doesn't translate the same. Okay. 
and uh, Drew says he doesn't have Facebook or else he would. If anybody else could uh, share his Facebook, that would be great. Would really appreciate that. And uh, do you have uh, any YouTube channel or anything? No, I don't know. Okay. Just Facebook and Instagram. So let me ask you, um, is there, maybe you should get more out there on social media wise, yeah, especially with I this, should. this eight man, uh, uh, event coming on. And if you beat Rickard, man, I think mm -hmm. your name is just going to go viral. And I think you need to capitalize on that and get out there. And if you can't handle the social media, I believe Matt is on top of that. And he's starting his own, like, you know, kind of social media agency kind of thing. And, you know, maybe he could help you out with that. But yeah, uh, definitely. I definitely want to hear more about you, brother. And, uh, you know, especially if you get this win, that is going to be huge for your career, man. You know, I'm working hard for it. So, so I've got, I got wins on Ron Bath back in the day. Oh. Um, I've got a few big wins that not so many people have heard about anymore. That was a while. Yeah. Ago. So you Brett's, need to Brett's start sharing those on Facebook before October 27th. Now that yeah. we got everybody going to be checking out your Facebook, you know, don't be it so humble, man. Let's get that out there. Let's see those matches against Ron Beth. Let's see you guys, uh, you know, that bit, that pin on uh, Bowen and all that. And people want to see these and really get to get to know who you are. Yeah, the yeah. the fun yeah. thing, the fun thing watching Brett on the table is when he gets a stop, he looks like the most calmest man in the world. Like it's just yeah, yeah. You know, the other person is given a hundred percent. They're they're working trying to get any sort of thing going, and and Brett's just like you know looks like he's just standing there watching TV. It's it's so he's so calm and relaxed <laughs> that it, at no point is there any strain on his face and then he would just roll through for a little pin. But um, we've got a guy in our club at the SA Titans, uh, Taron Broad, who is a very, very, very strong hooker. He will be in this tournament as well. Uh, he had a super match with Brett um, maybe a, well, maybe 12 months ago now. And uh, I, I was... Uh, helping Taryn get ready for that match. And when he would get in the hook position, I had both of my arms trying to stop Taryn and I couldn't stop Taryn's uh, hook from pinning me with both of my arms. And I thought, man, the amount of power that he is generating, this is insane. And then Brett just rolled through him like <laughs> so comfortably. <laughs> it was just, I could not believe how easily he handled the power that was coming from Taryn. I was like, that is just so next level. It was, it was mind blowing. Now, Brett, did you always have this power or is this something that you developed over the 17 years on the table? I was naturally, the first comp I entered was in a, a place called Saba in Malaysia 17 years ago. And I was a skinny, I was only 80 kilos, but I've always been good at it. And I won the national comp, never armrest for my life. So I always had, and I always had a hook, but I've definitely worked on it. Like I'm, I reckon I'm about 20, 30% stronger than when I first tarrant. Wow. Ooh, and uh, Tall Paul, his last name is Brett Coots, C-O-U-T-T-S. So, uh, you know, if you can, maybe share that Facebook uh, page for us because, you know, we want to get them out there for sure. And then uh, Tall Paul says, uh, wonder who made Brian Shaw's arm wrestling training contraption on his front bumper. That's actually really cool, and I'll definitely use it. So uh, does anybody know that in the chat or do you, you guys, have you seen this uh, contraption that Brian Shaw's got? Matt, have you seen it? I haven't seen it, but I hope it's not Andrew Wood. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> You'd never get one. <laughs> yeah, right. For real. Uh, what is it? I, have, uh, I haven't even heard of this. This is the first time I've heard of it. If Tall Paul, if, is that the one where it's like uh, it's it's kind of like a spinner, a multi spinner, and it like spins on the inside or something? I I, I kind of remember seeing it like a couple months ago when he first came out. I don't know if that's the same one you're talking about, or maybe he's posted some new video out or whatever. I haven't really been uh, staying up to date with it and all. But uh, what did they they have a big match coming up? Is, is it he's going against Eddie Hall or something? Is that is that locked in? Is that when is that going down, guys? I think that's the rumor at the moment. I, I yeah, there was, <laughs> we, I think we've talked about this a couple of times of what, what would be the potential um, first opponent for, for Brian Shaw. And I always had said, like, it's not going to be one of the top guys from the arm wrestling world. It's going to be somebody with a very big audience, uh, you know, with a built-in audience to get the most attention. Because if you've got 
the world's strongest man and he's a giant and he's personable and he's got this enormous built-in audience, he's not going to be going against somebody that is unknown to the rest of the world. And, you know, maybe they're, they're popular in the arm wrestling scene, but he wants to get maximum exposure. And the first time he steps on the arm wrestling table in a competitive sense, it's not going to be against somebody that we're familiar with. It's going to be somebody that the mainstream is going to be familiar with. And Eddie Hall is the the ideal choice. He's, you know, the exact uh, same category as Brian Shaw. I mean, he's coming from World's Strongest Man. He's a giant. He has an enormous mainstream following. Um, the two of them together, everyone uh, in the world can look at arm wrestling and go, yeah, I understand what's going on. You don't have to know all of the rules and everything it's just like he's trying to get his arm there he's trying to get his arm there it's very simple to understand so from that aspect i think it makes a lot of sense um you know maybe in the future after that you might see brian entering a couple of tournaments or something like that because that shine is going to be uh, a little bit diminished after that first match takes place because once, once that first match is there, that, that's where all the eyes are going to be on him. Uh, after that goes, you know, the interest is going to drop a little bit. I think um, Larry Reels would be better. I think so but, too. Um, Eddie Hall, I think it's going to be disappointing. Yeah. Very disappointing. But I think Larry could be actually, it would be interesting. The only thing is I'm not too sure that Larry's still arm wrestling. You know, I seen a couple, you know, videos out there saying that he was done with arm wrestling. And I think he was kind of getting scared with all the different arm breaks he witnessed. And I think it kind of, you know, discouraged him or something. I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure, but, you know, that was the rumor out there. But uh, Donkey's arm wrestling uh, says Brett is the only person I felt where I needed more bicep. Wow. So, uh, that, you know, they're that's talking Taryn. Really highly about uh, yeah. your, your inside game, bro. Yeah, that's Taryn. That's who I was talking about before, where I, I couldn't hold him with both my arms and uh, Brett just rolled through him. <laughs> it was unbelievable. 